Hello, Ron Clark here again. So, this week, uh, since the um, stack of questions seems to be growing exponentially, I'm going to answer four sort of quick questions. So, uh, question number one. Question number one. Which of your works would you think to be the most beneficial to the very beginner step one student? If you're already spending two hours a day on Barton, and then you commute one and a half hours each way, five days a week, to a nine hour work day, it can be difficult to squeeze in Know Thyself, CSM, Archaeus, TMO, Love Letter, and Book of Taurus. If someone about to start step one, could only squeeze in one or two, which would you recommend? After that, is there any sequential order you'd recommend for the rest of your works? Okay, yes. There's just so much stuff. Um, what I recommend for the beginning student of initiation in Dramatics is first off, the Know Thyself recordings. There's three recordings each giving an overview, an explanation, sort of experiential explanation of each of your three bodies. This is just sort of baseline knowledge. It's very helpful, even from step one. The other thing that I recommend is something that has absolutely nothing to do with initiation into hermetics, or barred on system even. And that is the magic of yod he vav -He adonai also known as TMO. Now, this is a, a Kabbalistic utterance, a canticle, if you will, that you associate uh, energy movements and movements of awareness as you recite the canticle. It's very melodic. Um, and you generate a specific type of energy called the Adonai Light, the rainbow-hued Adonai Light. And you can use this to do various things. It is a magical energy. And it is a very good introduction to working with magical energies and generating magical energies, okay? And it's, it's charming. People who practice it just love practicing it. It's very satisfying specifically the use of the canticle, which I'll give you a demonstration. It goes, Ani yod he vav he Adonai Ribbon Shalom Amen. So, TMO involves uttering this canticle while you're performing these energy movements, etc. So, this is what I recommend also to a new student of initiation to hermetics because it is so unlike initiation to hermetics, it will give you something else to do as well as your hermetic exercises. Now, beyond that, for a student of initiation into hermetics, not necessarily step one, the next thing I would recommend is the Archaeus, um, Ron's Healing Archaeus, it's called. Um, and this is a very hermetic, alchemical sort of practice, having again to do with your three bodies. And here you learn, hands-on, what the three bodies are and what you can do with the three bodies. And it's a progressive set of exercises or list lessons. And that will help you along your way with initiation into hermetics. Now, as to my other works, I would recommend in this order, Love Letter to a Dying World, which encompasses much of initiation to hermetics in a very abbreviated fashion. Then, the Book of Ares, which deals with essential meaning. And then the Book of Taurus, which deals with essential form. Now, these three alone 
can be a long study, a long process, because there is work to do in each of them. Unlike uh, the Archaeus and TMO, there's work to do, but it's not as far-reaching as the work to be done in those three works. Okay? That's basically it. Okay. Question number two is... Question number two. In KTQ Step 5, Ten Kabbalistic Keys, Barton's descriptions in the number five includes this number also represents strength and power pertaining to the planet Mars. Barton's description of six says the number six represents a sun called Tiferet in the Kabbalah. And for seven, seven is the number of Venus. So now for my question, what is your view of these correspondences? How can this be reconciled with the Grot tree? What is the true meaning of the numbers from a universal point of view? Is it different than the meaning we should attribute to the numbers when working on KTQ? Okay, now it's clear here that Barden is using the Western Hermetic tree of life. Possibly what I call the Hebrew tree, which looks like the Western Hermetic tree, but has the proper Hebrew um, attributions to the past. Although that's doubtful too, because he is assigning the planets to the Sephirot, or relating the planets to the Sephirot. In Hebrew Kabbalah, they do not relate to the Sephirot. So he's using here the Western Hermetic tree, which you're all familiar with as the Golden Dawn tree of life, okay? So they do not relate to the Gra tree. The only way in which KTQ relates to the Gra tree has to do with the meaning of the letters, not with his association of the Sephirot and the numbers to the planet. But in Barden's system, these are the planetary numbers that he's dealing with here in this section on the numbers. Okay? He's not really dealing with the Sephirotic numbers as much as he is dealing with the planetary numbers, which in the Golden Dawn tradition match up with the Sephirotic numbers. Okay? I hope that is as clear as mud. <laughs> you, we can talk about it more if you need, okay? Okay. Question number three is... Question number three. In step nine of Initiation into Hermetics, Barton warns against looking into one's own future using a magic mirror saying that it will deprive them of free will. I am a lay person wishing to consult a psychic clairvoyant. Is there any chance that I will be deprived of free will if they look into my future? <clears throat> okay, so... <clears throat> Barden's work with the mirror in step nine is far different than what you will get from your average clairvoyant whatever, okay? They're apples and oranges. They're so radically different. Uh, so the, what you can see through the mirror with sufficient training is gonna be on a par far different, okay? So what your average psychic, you know, clairvoyant is dealing with is the, the threads of continuity that tie each moment together. This continuity that runs through everything that exists. So it is fairly easy to see the probable future by sensing those threads of continuity. 
That is what most psychics and clairvoyants are working with, are the threads of continuity and probable futures. Okay? So it's not absolute at all in, from that perspective. The mirror looking into your past lives and your future lives is a totally different matter, okay? And you can see, you can achieve objectively accurate perceptions, which is far different than going to a psychic clairvoyant. Okay. Question number four. Question number four. You have not met before in the physical. Barton gives you a text that says, Hi Ron, I have arrived in town. Would you like to meet up tomorrow for a coffee and a cigarette and we can discuss hermetics or you can ask me anything? Given that opportunity, what do you ask Barton or wish to discuss, Ron? Yes. Now, I really like this question. <laughs> it's been a fantasy of mine for a number of years. Um, so, at this point in my life, what I would ask Franz Barden is what inspires you? In this moment of your existence, having experienced all that you've experienced, what is inspiring you to carry on? What, what's next? What inspires you? Okay? That's what I would ask. And it would be a very interesting conversation, I'm sure. Okay, so we've gotten down a few questions there in the ever-growing pile. So if you do have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And we'll add them to the magic box for future weeks. Alrighty. Bye-bye.